You are listening to the Retina UK National Peer Support Group Spring Meeting, recorded Thursday the 30th of March 2023. Good evening everybody and welcome to the Spring Meeting of our National Peer Support Group. Tonight we are going to be joined by Jessica Bill who is from Vocalise and she is going to be speaking about touch tours in the theatre and also how we can utilise audio description to help us understand and enjoy the theatre experience. So thank you very, very much, Jessica, for joining us this evening. It's much appreciated. Please, painters, what is a touch tour and, and how do we use audio description? Oh, hi there, Mark and everybody, and thanks for inviting me tonight. So, yeah, so my name is Jess, and I am the marketing and audience manager at Vocalize. So just to just give you a little bit of info about me to start with at Vocalize, when we do our talks and presentations, we like to do a bit of self description so that everybody knows who's in the room and we all feel equal. So I'm Jess, I am a white woman in my early 40s with short blonde hair and I have my headset on tonight as I am also visually impaired myself. So um, the beauty of doing this on Zoom, I'm able to have my notes that I can read alongside being able to talk to you as well. So yeah, so as Mark said, I'm going to talk, I'm going to start off talking just a bit about Vocalize, who we are, and what we do and then go into some more detail about um, what you might expect when going to an audio described performance at the theatre and the touch tours what they're like and how they how they happen um, as a visually impaired person myself I really love going to the theatre and a touch tour really makes everything so much um, more enjoyable and what Vocalize really aims to do is to bring the arts and heritage to life for blind and visually impaired people through audio description. Um, so this, we really want people to be able to experience all these wonderful opportunities to enjoy the arts and heritage that are out there for everyone, putting us all on that equal footing that we can all um, get the advantages. It's all, you know, there's many health benefits to being able to experience art and culture, whether you enjoy the theatre or museums or galleries, the, the general health and well-being benefits to us all are just immense. So it's really important that we're all able to, to access them. Um, so, I mean, you may have experienced audio description before, maybe on your television or at the cinema, um, but within Vocalize, we do, uh, we specialise within the arts, so it's theatres, museums, galleries, and heritage venues where we work at. Um, so, yes, so within Vocalize, as I say, it's really about bringing everything to life for people who are blind or visually impaired to be able to enjoy the arts. So for people who maybe you've never come across audio description before, and first of all, you're wondering, what even is that that they do? <laughs> so. Just to fill you in, the audio description is a live verbal commentary. It provides information on the visual aspect of a performance as it's happening. So whether this is giving you things to understand what's happening within the story, such as the set or the design. It may also be things like the, the facial expressions of someone or particular costumes or some props, things that really help explain what's happening on the stage. Um, sure as visually impaired people may have been at the theatre or something and you're enjoying a show and all of a sudden the audience is like laughing is telling you like wow I don't know what's going on here um, so with the audio describers being there you know if something unexpected happens they're able to be flexible and adapt and explain to you um, so you don't have to rely on the person sitting next to you to be able to whisper in time what's happening um, the audio description is generally um, delivered on headset, so it's very discreet and you're just a, a part of the, the regular audience and um, it's not as if you're standing out as the visually impaired person. It's all very discreet and you're able to just feel that you're enjoying the show along with your friends and family, family and the rest of the audience as well. Um, at Vocalize, we believe very strongly 
very strongly in equality. So really want to make sure that everyone has that access to these performances as much as everyone else does. Um, so a few key things just about Vocalize and what we aim to do. Um, so first of all, we want to increase the amount of audio description that's out there. So within the theatres itself, um, whether you're a fan of uh, big West End musicals or you like your traditional Shakespeare, maybe you're into the ballet or the opera, there's, there will be audio description out there and not only provided through Vocalize, but there also you might have heard of the organisation Mind's Eye and also some theatres and venues will have their own in-house describers as well. So there's lots of audio description out there, but we really want to make sure that there's a lot and that there's, you know, all the different genres. If there's something new, we've also done some outdoor um, summer work in festivals. Um, so there's a whole range. Hopefully the summer is going to be here soon and we'll want to be outside. Um, so there's, as I say, the amount of audio description out there, not only at theatres, we started off um, with audio description in theatres, but have moved on now to museums and galleries and heritage, where it, the audio description may be a, a pre-recorded guide or it may be a live tour. This might also include an object handling session or workshop. And then over the last few years, Starting through the pandemic, we have then been working with audio description for digital. So whether that's within an exhibition, they may have a short film. We may do the audio description for that. And also within some installations, if there's a sound or light show or something, we've done audio description there as well. So we're always looking to branch out on new ventures and we get approached by different um companies that um, are putting on uh, a new show and see if uh, we can do the audio description for it so we're always looking to increase the amount of things out there making sure there's so much out there for people to go and enjoy and then of course you know you've got all this stuff out there and if you're blind or vision impaired we then need to tell you what's out there um, so we want to make sure that everybody knows about it so whether that's me coming to speak to you tonight or other similar groups we have our website obviously has lots of information on there about what's on and within the listing section you're able to search through to find out what's happening in your area or if you're going for a weekend away um, different regions and different dates so it's quite easy to be able to search for your particular um, area or favorite thing you want to go and see through our website listings and we also, um, for people who um, sign up, we send out a monthly email newsletter with information about what's coming up for the month ahead to give you time to book in advance. Um, obviously, for theatres, sometimes you know it does get fully booked, so it's good to be able to plan that little bit ahead. And also, we have our quarterly What's On guide. Um, so, as well as this also being online, you know, we've aware that we want to be able to people to be able to access the information in all their chosen formats so the quarterly guide we have a printed clear print version and that's also you can get it on braille or on a audio usb disc as well so just lots of different ways of spreading the word and of course social media is a key tool for us now as well and we use twitter and facebook and instagram probably our main three platforms we recently just set a new, up a new group on Facebook for called Audio Description for Arts Lovers UK. So a place for people to join and talk to each other about their experiences, maybe find out what's on, um, a way of sort of growing our community of people who enjoy the arts, whether they're theatre lovers, museum fans, um, or galleries, the whole everything really. Uh, we also want to make sure that the different venues that we work with across the country, um, we're a national charity, so we're, we're well spread out. Um, but to make sure that the venues, that they're able to uh, welcome blind and visually impaired people. So we provide training for this, so in visual awareness, making sure that the front of house staff are 
comfortable with guiding visually impaired people, that they're able to communicate well with us. Um, and also, um, importantly, that their website and social media is also accessible. So we do a web accessibility content training course um, because obviously we want to be able to find out what's on in the first place. And if the website isn't accessible, then that in itself is in itself a barrier to people being able to enjoy the art. So it's just another way of being able to take that away from take that barrier away and that people are able to access all these venues websites and um, then go along and, and enjoy what's what's on so we've got all these great aims and um, obviously you know we're constantly developing and progressing um, but if you're then going to go along to the theatre for the first time for an audio described performance how would it work and what would happen so as I say, the first thing is to, well, obviously decide what you want to go and see. So we've got all that information available, as I already said. And within our listings, we do include a phone number and email address for booking and the, the ticket price. So you would contact the venue, say, I want to book to go and see, um, for example, I want to go and see Noughts and Crosses. Oh, it's on the first day, it's the audio described performance and they will talk you through the best seats. Um, sometimes, as I was saying, with the way the headsets and the signals work, you may need to sit in specific seats to get a good reception for the audio description. So the, the booking staff will be able to help you with all of that and make sure that you're booked into the right seats. Um, so we then have the... The booking, so you've done all your booking. Um, there's often also a concession fee ticket price if you're blind or visually impaired. You may have to join up to um, the theatre or museum's access uh, access list. Um, you might have to send in some photo ID and eligibility um, proof of your visual impairment. But once that's all set up, then um, you're on their access scheme and that will generally entitle you to concessions you may be able to take a companion along for free or half price it's kind of variable at different um different venues so always worth checking when you're booking in what their offer is um so once that's all arranged then and you go get along to the theater the other thing that we do for vocalized described performances is we provide um pre-show introductory notes so these are these are available to download on the website listings and you can either listen to them as an audio uh, audio file or their large print text as well. Just give you some more background information about what you're going to see, the set and some of the characters. Um, there's also on that website link is details about the theatre and access information about getting to know as well. So always handy to check on that before you're going to something just to make sure that you're you're properly um, prepared and know all that you need to before going um, if you don't manage to get those notes if you're not online then they are also read live uh, 15 minutes before the show starts by the describers um, again keep it fresh in your mind bring it all into your mind's eye and to life and also as a way for the theatre just check again that your headset is working properly so it's really good. And then moving on to the thing that I know Mark is very <laughs> excited about, the touch tour. Um, so at the theatre for uh, vocali vocalised described performances, there will be a touch tour, which is can be about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours before the show starts. And this is because the best part of the touch tour is the opportunity to get on the stage so obviously the stage then needs to be cleared and changed around ready for the start of the show which is why you need to give a bit of time before the start of the performance um so yeah so the touch tour itself is very exciting and it's led by the describers who will be describing the performance for you so you get to meet those as well and there'll be front of house staff there if you need guiding, if you need one-to-one -one to support, let them know that in advance so that they've got enough people there to assist you. And as you, as I say, you'll be taken generally through a maze of corridors 
and eventually end up on the stage, which is a pretty special experience. Um, so the describers will talk you through the set. There will generally be some members of the cast there as well who will talk about their roles. If they have a specific accent during the show, they will give you a, a demo of that. Um, so you prepared for who you're listening out for. Um, so once you've once they've sort of introduced themselves, talked about themselves and their roles, then there's a chance um, to go and explore the set. As I say, to have a good feel, so you know the size. You can generally walk across it. There's also generally be a rail of costumes, um, and they can talk through the characters. You can often get to try on a coat or a hat or something. Um, and there's generally also a table of props. Um, so if there's something that's crucial to the performance, it's often sort of guns or daggers, swords, um, or masks, the Phantom of the Opera, the Phantom Mask. So there's lots of things which you get to feel. And again, you know, it really just makes it so that when you're in the audience and, you know, you might be a bit too far back to be able to quite see exactly what's happening, that you've sort of really had that first-hand experience of, oh, yeah, I know what that prop is. I know what that feel, you know, the swishy skirt or whatever. You've felt the material. And it's just this pretty amazing experience. Very special, I think. So definitely, if you see a touch tour on any of these audio described performances, it's definitely well worth booking into as well. Um, and then, yeah, they normally last about half an hour. They are definitely too short, in my opinion. I'm sure we could all spend hours and hours exploring the set and costumes and talking to the cast, but they do have a show to do after all. <laughs> so, um, yeah, once the touch tour's finished, then you get given your headset and you get all ready for the performance. The uh, front of house staff can assist you, help you to find your seats, and also at the interval, come back, check if you need any drinks, any help. Um, get to the toilets or anything or just any general assistance um, and the other thing to mention is if you have a guide dog and you want to go to the theatre that the um, staff at the venue will generally be very happy to look after your dog for you um, while you go and enjoy the show um, of course if you do want to have your dog with you that's also possible and you normally be given an aisle seat so that there's, there's room for you and the dog as well to fit in um, so yeah, so that's the overall of a theatre audio described performance. And then, as I say, we work with the museums, galleries and heritage sites as, as well. So with those, so there's different types of um, audio described tours that you might get. So um, the best, obviously, is the live audio described tour. So um, one of the museums we work with quite a lot is the Postal Museum in London. So do regular audio de described tours where the describer um, will choose some of the, the key objects to describe in detail and also a museum curator will be there to fill in any background information as well. So it's a real in-depth look at some very specific objects. And this tour is also very popular because there's also the mail rail train that you get to have a ride on it's um the underground railway for the post office and there's a commentary alongside it as well so it's very audio described so that's quite a highlight of that tour so if you've not been to the postal museum yet then um i would definitely recommend that one and um other museums obviously across london and the uk also do great audio <laughs> described tours they might also include um, an object handling session, so they might have produced some replicas of a um, of the exhibit, or if it's a, uh, a if there's paintings, they may have produced some uh, large print versions so that you can get or tactile um, paintings diagrams, so you can get a real feel for the piece itself as well. But museums and galleries they also run some workshops for visually impaired people. Um, these are slowly coming back since our pandemic days. Um, so, such as the Wallace Collection, they have a describe and draw for life drawing classes or clay workshop and other museums as well. Um, so, it's always worth looking if you want to get involved and be creative after you've done a tour. It's often quite a nice way to reflect after you've seen something 
try and make some something that um, that reminds you of it. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's the live audio described tours, and also we produce some of the recorded guides as well. So if you're going around, um, you pick up the headset, you can often download this guide from the website as well. But if you don't have access to that, then at the venue you can pick up one of their headsets and you go around um, listening to the different stops on for the objects. But these guides, they also have information on navigating around the museum and venue as well. So really helpful for us as visually impaired people. Often you may be l looking at something and think, oh, I know I need to get to stop number four, but how on earth do I get there? So this gives you navigational instructions as well. Um, so I know on our website we have an audio section where you can uh, download and listen to some of the guides. We've got the um, the Charles Dickens Museum, I think it's the top one at the moment. So um, that's, uh, as I say, tells you uh, all about the, the house and the different rooms and also how to get from one to the other, which is also very, very helpful. <laughs> um, at museums as well, one thing to note that um, it's always good to, if they don't have a specific tour or guide um, advertise or anything, that you can um, contact their access department um, on their website. I must admit this isn't always that easy to find, but if you do a Google search for access at wherever you're going, the Science Museum or wherever, and it should come up with a contact and um, you can phone or email and say, I'm, I'm visually impaired, I'd like to come and visit um, in a couple of weeks' time. Do you have any volunteers who could help me um, and guide me around and give me some description? And as I say, we have done training with many um, museums, so often there is someone, it's just you do need to give a bit of notice for this. could be up to a couple of weeks, some it's only 24 hours, but if you phone them, email them and check in, then they will be best to advise you on that. And it's a really good way that you can have a bespoke tour of a museum, um, somewhere that you might have really wanted to go to, but that they haven't got an actual uh, official tour booked in. But it's another way of being able to access it, which is, as I keep saying, what Vocalize is all about. We um, want the equality so that blind and visually impaired people can access all this wonderful um, art and culture that's on offer to us all across the UK. Um, so I think that's probably all from me for now. If anyone's got any questions, um, or I also have information, I think Mark already had it on how to contact Vocalize afterwards with our email address and phone number. Yeah, any any information um, that you guys that are listening in that, that would like from Jess in how to get in contact or anything like that, it will be all in the follow up email that I will be sending out um, in a few days time uh, with the link to our YouTube channel where you can listen to this recording again if you would like to another listen um, if there's anything that you want to to find out. So if there are any other questions. Um, that you want to, um, that we don't get around to asking this evening, then you can again drop me an email and I can find that information out for you as well. So does anybody have um, any question for Jess? Thank you very much, Jess. That was a, a fantastic presentation and it's left me very inspired to, um, to give it a whirl and um, find out exactly what is going on in our nation's capital. I'm not very far from there, so I've got no excuses. Oh, not to There's get lots going on i can no. assure you of that Mark, what are we going to go and maybe we should go together to something you know the, the one that's on the top of my list um is the back to the future at the adelphi um i yeah i would love to go and see that um but whether they do um the the, the, the touch tours there or if that's something whether you could organize i can tell you off the top of my head mark that back to the future is already described on the oh, either the 22nd or the 23rd of april so a few weeks time <laughs> oh okay okay <laughs> I'll, um, I'll, 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 find I'll, it. yeah okay i'm gonna look at that and does that include the touch tour as well because I, I i must I think sit so, in, yeah i must sit inside the delorean if they've got one <laughs> of course uh, has anybody else got any questions for jess thanks jess that's brilliant Uh, there we go. <clears throat>
Ian. Ian. Hi, Ian. You're Hi. Right. Yeah. I don't know whether <laughs> I'm not sure where I can't. Unfortunately, I can't tell whether my video is on or off on this interface because it's uh, a bit. There's no. There's not the usual controls. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jessica. That was really good and I very enjoy. And I will certainly check out um, what you've got. I think I've. I had a look actually when I I've moved to uh, South Wales recently, and I think there is an organisation here as well that sort of does um, theatre described performances. I don't. I don't know whether you work with them or. How, but um, it, yeah, it's really, in, I mean, I, I'm interested in it um, from theatre and I hope to try out one of your performances soon. Also, obviously with um, movies and TV and um, museums and galleries, I'm, I'm more and more looking to access that. And one of the things that I, uh, I mean, I, I'm a, um, a person whose sight is getting worse over time, so I've I've had vision and I've still got some vision, but I'm needing more and more description. And I'm interested what your thoughts are on. I often sometimes feel that in, uh, I guess, particularly sort of description for movies and TV, they're often describing the visual aspects, um, which sort of become less important, I think, in a way, as opposed to the the story aspects you know so if it's a play um I feel a bit like I'm I'm much more interested in like the aspects that relate to the stories or the emotions and you know so I th as you described it might be that people burst out laughing and you kind of why have they burst out laughing yeah. um uh, you know it's because someone has an ex a, a sad expression or a happy expression and that is relevant I think to the story whereas sometimes you kind of think the the color of the frock is is less uh relevant to the story so so how do you sort of do you have a kind of approach to what you describe and and, and how you how you choose yeah i guess um it, i mean describing is a, a difficult thing to start off with and, yeah um, you know the, the describers that we use they have gone through um, quite a, a training process um of you know how to audio describe the things which are important to include um and i guess people describing different things you know people who are describing for tv they may have done some different training or may have just thought i know how to describe this um so yeah i think it's all um quite a personal thing to the dis describers itself but um obviously within the play and within vocalize the describers that we train we want to make sure that they are giving the things which are most relevant to people understanding the plays mm. per say um and yeah the emotions behind what's happening um yeah we we did um quite a lot of work uh couple of years ago about describing diversity and um, how that um, fits in um, what actors how they want to be described um, and then you know is all that always relevant to the play itself or is that yeah. part of it so there's a lot of things which people you know have to take into account when producing the description and, and some of it does at the end of the day come down to that describer's personal way that they want to convey it um yeah but um yeah no i think um yeah obviously we always want to work on improving the description making sure that people are getting the most from it and with the play as well obviously you know there's often not a lot of time to fit in description yeah. as well so they've got to get the most relevant things in in that short space of time so that it's not then crashing over the dialogue for the next part so yeah, yeah it's, it's a it's a tricky I'll, thing it's always a yeah, balancing I, act and I, I like feel... I liked what you said about the the pre-show session in so I went to see Twelfth Night a few months ago in here in Cardiff and um I watched beforehand a sort of you know, a kind of five-minute summary on YouTube just to refresh my memory of yes, who the characters yeah. were. And it was very helpful to sort of uh, know, you know, who, who was going to be in the show. I think I, I'll probably anyone would have benefited from I think they do, yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, the notes we do, they're normally sort of 10, 15 minutes long, no longer really. Yeah. Um, and just give that brief overview. Just Yeah, really just maybe to refresh you or if you don't know what you're going to see, give you yeah. some clues and, yeah, just to know who the cast is. Because, you know, often as visually impaired people, we can't read the cast. So you might want at the theatre and you want a programme, but uh, you can't then see the programme. So it all kind of helps with all that. And, um, yeah. I think more more theatres, not only the vocalised ones, but other theatres putting on their own in-house description, they're also doing uh, programme notes, introductory notes as well. I know uh, the National Theatre sends them out, so and other ones as well. It's definitely something that seems to be coming more prominent um, nationally, not just what we were doing. So it's good. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. That's but, good. yeah, I don't really know a lot about the whale. As you, yeah, as I say, you know, we do do a lot of our work within sort of London South East. We are trying to broaden out further. We, um, but Wales, I'm not sure we're doing a lot in at the moment, but obviously there is, as I say, the other um, organisations. And on our website, we want to, you know, put all the audio description, not just the vocalised ones. So if yeah. there's people in Wales doing it, then we'll happily list those and tell people about them as well. Yeah, I think they had a website. I'll have to look back because, you know, I guess, you know, you, you need to plan ahead and go to the, the specific performance where it's described. So, yes, I'll start, yeah. start looking now. Thank you. Oh, Thanks very much well, enjoy question. whatever you go to next. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions for Jess or would anybody else like to share their experiences with... Um, how have they found going to the theatre, whether it, you've been on a touch tour or whether you've experienced audio description? You know, how was it for you? You know, um, just kind of in relation to Ian's question there, you know, you know, did you find it worked for you? And, you know, uh, would you recommend um, the audio described performances and the touch tours? whether it is at the theatre or whether it's um, another cultural venue, um, it would be nice to hear from from the rest of the group if you're if you're happy to to share. Yeah. Mark, I've yeah. got... Oh, yeah. an expert. Sorry. Uh, who, um, um, I, um... Um, I just wanted to let you know that I actually worked with someone last year on the Commonwealth Games um, when I did a couple of shifts. And I was actually centred around the main Victoria Square. There was a young lady there from Vocalise and she's um, self-employed, but she works directly uh, doing audio description. So she used me as a guinea pig with a headset and she was on the other side, which is a good few hundred feet. And it was as clear as anything. And she described the dancers and what was happening on stage. And wow. that was the first time I actually had my, you know, kind of, Audio described kind of, you know, um, stage performance live as it was happening. She described the costumes, uh, she described the facial expressions, and it was like a multicultural dance uh, that was um, happening. And she described where everyone we was standing, and it was absolutely brilliant. It really was. Wow. Who was the uh, describer? Uh, it was somebody called Caroline. I don't know her surname. Okay. Uh, but she's um, she's from she was from Durham actually, County Durham. But she's worked with you know the the chap who does the deluxe, um, you know audio description book from Deluxe on the TV. The guy who's got the very oh he's got very posh book. I don't know his name now. Oh, I think I do know who you mean. I think I know the lady you mean. Um, I think she and, does um, quite a dance description. Um, yeah. But it was very good. I mean, I have to be honest with you, I've got audio. And the one thing I've noticed, the BBC are actually using audio description more, um, you know, on some of their programmes, on their comedy programmes, which is actually quite refreshing because I think they've been a bit slow to catch on, to be totally honest with you. Go on, Rich. That's me. That's me. <laughs> that Rach? Rich. Rich. Uh, I think Rich, what, I'll let Rich first and then I'll see what I was going to say. Go on, Rich. Um, I just wanted to say, so... Um, before I met Rach, because um, Rach is my partner and my fiance, um, I never had, I never went to the theatre. I never used audio description. I was quite, 
stubborn when it came to all the description. And I went to the Opera House in Manchester to see uh, Bad Air Hell, the musical, in 2017. And ever since then, I've always used all the description because for me, like, for me, I'm totally blind. So without that, without the audio description, I'd be lost. And especially some of the some of the touch tours that um, I've been on um, have been amazing. That that I, I'd have to say probably um, the best two for me were, were the one at the um, Prince at Edward Theatre in the West End when, when Rachel and I went to see uh, Mary Poppins the musical. That was brilliant. And then. The most recent one, we went to see Mrs. Doubtfire at the Opera House in Manchester uh, last September. And that was brilliant because we actually got to have a play with the puppet they use in the um, in the musical. And, uh, uh, with, without audio description, whether it's vocalised, mind's eyes, whoever's doing it, for me, I'd be lost. So I I, I do appreciate it a lot, have, having the audio description. Fantastic. Good. Um, do we have any other questions or? I was just going to say, um, I actually got involved with um, Mind's Eye once going to an event in Bristol. And we um, there was only four of us that were visually impaired or blind. And we actually worked with the, the, basically from the head downwards, basically from the producers, um, the people who do the tours, people who do the audio description, to the front of house staff um, and they basically used us as guinea pigs in a sense so we told them what um you know audio description meant to us how they could change it how they could amend it um yeah it, that was something really really good to be involved in and then since then I actually myself I never really did audio description because I still do have some good peripheral vision um but I know like when you're doing dance shows and stuff like that Sometimes when the dark in the background, for example, Blood Brothers, um, I think without that, I probably would have missed a lot of the show. So going forward now, um, if I can get to an audio described tour, I will. The thing for me is the fact that sometimes you see a show that you love and it's only on for, say, three, five days and they don't have, they don't do an audio, they don't do an audio described tour. So that's, that's the only thing that's a little bit sometimes frustrating that, you, you see it and think oh that's an amazing show but they don't do it audio even anywhere across the country they still don't do it yeah that is definitely one of the many frustrations us visually impaired people have um but yeah obviously you know we, we want there to be more audio description and um yeah we work with as many venues as we can but you know, obviously it does cost the theatre and the company to put on the audio description it would be wonderful if it was like every performance for every oh, show but yeah we're yeah. sadly not quite there yet but um, mm. right the other thing I was just going to mention just came well as Rich was saying about how much the audio description means to him and everything that also you know if people do go along to an audio described show or something and want to write a review of it um, that we can put on our website to um, so people who maybe haven't been before you know get that real first hand um, knowledge as you say it's so powerful to get you know first-hand experiences of someone who's gone along to something and what you really enjoyed and you know why it's been so good so if you ever do go anything and feel like writing about it afterwards then please just drop us an email uh, and I'll, 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 I'll put that email and any links to your website where you can re write a view review um in the follow-up email i believe we've got john has got his hand up hi john what's your question yeah, hi. So thank you. Thank you, Jess. That's a, a lovely summary of how it all works. Uh, right. So so a quick quick couple of questions. Um, what's the most challenging thing you've had to audio describe in a live show? And you mentioned, you know, some things, things happen which are not scripted. Um, what's the most interesting one of those? Oh, well, I'm not actually a describer myself, John. Um, okay. So... I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not the one to be able to answer <laughs> your question. Um, I'm just trying to think if I've been to it. I'm visually impaired myself. I'm just trying to think if I've been yeah. to anything where there's suddenly been something happened. That, or think, I guess um, I think once, what was the one? Um, 
can't think what the show is called at the moment. Oh, the governor, two man, one man, two governors, where they're sort of giving the sandwiches out, and this bloke sort of popped up from the audience and was like <laughs> taking a sandwich or something, which obviously was not at all in the script. Um, but the scribes were sort of on hand and sort of were very much telling us what was going on, so we were in hysterics along with the rest of the audience. But um, yeah, I don't know. Has anybody else been to anything where? think something might have happened which is an unscripted one that they've suddenly had to jump in on can i share one yeah yeah uh hold on um yeah uh, I, I it was um the one i went to in cardiff recently was actually midsummer night's dream and um so there's a bit where bottom um is at doing the play within a play and he says something like, um, to live or to die, 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 die. And he said, he wants around the stage saying, die, die, die. And it happened that evening that there was a famous Welsh actor in the audience who plays uh, a character in the soap opera Publicum called Die. And at, some, at, one, at the end, Bottom looked into the audience and then like, looked really shocked and went, die? <laughs> and it's, and everyone burst out laughing in the audience. And like, I would have been very lost at this point if my wife hadn't been able to describe what the heck was <laughs> going on, <laughs> that the, the, this complicated situation. So that would be a challenge for a describer, I think. But, um, but yeah, so that's the kind of thing you probably would need a bit of help with. You would indeed, yeah. <laughs> you had your wife with you. Yes, yeah, she, she, knew, she knew what was going on. That was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> We had it once where the uh, one of the we had it where you have an audio describer in the first half and then one in the second half. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the the lady in the first half actually lost her voice oh. as she was going along. So luckily, the other lady could jump in. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. There's normally two describers, so they each take a half each. Because obviously, it's quite a tiring thing to be alert for all that time. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, see, all these things happen within the theatre, and if it was um, just recorded audio description, would it work so well? Who knows? But um, <laughs> there is some recorded audio description as well within the theatres, which is starting to come a bit more to prominence, but um, it's still a, kind of in its beginning stages. I was going to I was going to ask Jess um do you actually have kind of any kind of active campaigns running you know anything that's funded to kind of get the awareness out there to say perhaps theatres that are not quite up to speed with accessibility and making their performances you know accessible for their VI community you know do you have any challenges um not well, sort of specifically, obviously, you know, any campaigns you know, we're always happy to get involved with. What we do is um, we do a this report, the state of theatre access or state of museum access um, each year. So where we look at the accessibility either of the website or people's experience of going along as to how accessible it's been. And in fact, this year, no, last year, I forget which year we're in, we actually got a um, a grant from the heritage fund where we um did uh we had a whole team of volunteers um looking at website accessibility for museums all across the country and then we produced a report and from that we're then some of the museums where they didn't come out too great we're then working with them to do as i say the training so that hopefully they can then improve for future so yeah we always want to work with venues where maybe the access does need a bit of improvement um, nice. so yeah, we luckily had that grant for the museums and um, this year we're going to be doing the theatres, but um, I'm not sure yet if we will be able to do something as in-depth, but definitely want to do a similar project. No, it's, it's definitely amazing that you're trying to make a difference. You know, our, our whole aim, especially for the national peer support groups, is to bring the awareness and opportunity for our community to engage um, with cultural and any kind of activity um, in their local area. You know, we, we've had Rachel speak um, about, you know, VI holidays at our winter national peer group meeting back in January. 
and you know we've we've spoke about other outdoor activities you know and as you mentioned we are sort of coming out of the the, the old pandemic now and we just want our uh, community across the uk to just come out and um something that they may never have known existed you know and this is myself included um that you know which no pun intended could open their eyes to different possibilities you know, and, and to, you know, to go on and go, okay, you know, I can do that in a theatre. I wonder if I can do that in an art gallery. You know, what else is out there, you know, that they might not know about. So I really do appreciate um, you speaking tonight about um, Vocalise, you know, and, and what you guys do, you know, in the arts um, arena, as it, as it were. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I've just noticed the time. It's, it's just come up to eight o'clock now. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone to come along. It's been it's been a a, a wonderful um, meeting, and I really do appreciate all your um, comments and um, you know experiences um, from you know you going to this, uh, to the theatre. It's uh, and and the museums. It's it's been absolutely brilliant. Just got a couple of things to mention that is coming up from uh, Retina UK. If anybody is interested in joining the summer um, national peer support group meeting on the 30th, 29th, 29th sorry, the 29th of June, um, we have um, a chap called Paul Ashurst, and he is from a experienced a company called AbleNet. So he's going to give you guys the opportunity to get in the driving seat as he talks about driving experiences and some other outdoor experiences that you can um, take part in as a VI individual. Um, and I will be giving my own personal account of my flying experience, which I'll be taking part in in four weeks' mm -hmm. time, and a sneak peek of what it was like inside the cockpit as well as I take on a flying lesson. So it's going to be a very, very exciting meeting. So please pop that in your diaries for the 29th of June at 7 p.m. Also upcoming, we have a webinar on the 13th. So if anybody wants to get involved in um, volunteering for Retina UK, we've got a wonderful uh, webinar on the 13th of April, which will be about um, volunteering for us and how you can get involved. We also have our conference which is on the 23rd and the 24th of June. Our professionals conference is on the 3rd and our annual conference AGM is on the 24th uh, uh, and that is going to be held at the uh, University of Westminster in London. Uh, it's the Marleybone campus of Madden. So if you can come and join us in person, that will be fantastic. Please come along and meet the team or alternatively, you can stream that um online um if you can't make it in person i don't think if there's anything else that is coming up um we also do have a webinar in um may and i'm trying to think i think i think of may and that is all going to be about how to style your hair so um as a vi individual um and it's it's open for for, for both men and women i'm not going to be sexist it's going to be open for all you know if you want to come along and find out a little bit more about from my list um then please join us for that one and both webinars are going to be at 7 p and i think that is everything at the top of my um memory if i have forgotten anything i do apologize um but i will make sure that they will be in the follow-up email so thank you so much everyone for for joining us for our spring meeting for the national peer support group uh it's been much appreciated thank you jess bill for um your talk this evening and um, we look forward to seeing you um in the summer for the next one so thank you very very much and Thanks I wish you a Thanks lovely for inviting me today. It's been a pleasure. Right. Lovely. Thank you very, very much, everybody. You take care and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. bye. Take take care. Care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 bye, -bye.
Come and join us and meet the Retina UK team at our 2023 Professionals and Annual Conference held this year in London at the University of Westminster Marleybone Campus opposite Madame Tussauds on Friday the 23rd and Saturday the 24th of June. More information and how to register is available on our events page on our website. Thanks very much for your support. We look forward to seeing you there. We hope you have enjoyed this recording. If you have any questions, queries, or wish to leave any feedback, then please leave it in the comment section below. Alternatively, you can send your inquiries to info at retinauk.org.uk. Contact us via the telephone on 01280 821 334 or call our helpline on 0300 111 4000 which is open Monday to Friday 9.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. If you would like to know more about our local peer groups, when your next meeting will be held, or if you wish to get involved in creating your own group, or would like to know more about our services that Retina UK provides, then please visit our information and support page on our website www.retinauk.org.uk and navigate to our local peer group page. Thanks again for listening. We hope to see you again soon. Take care and bye for now.